Hey everyone, Dan here. I get this question, should I copy the old masters to learn to paint? That's a question that comes up a lot in workshops as well as people email me. And the short answer is yes. But there are some caveats to that that I think you need to understand in order to actually get benefit out of it. For centuries, copying old masters in museums was one of the mainstays or the cornerstones or the foundations of learning how to paint. And it, without a doubt, it's a great, great way to paint. In, I'm sorry, a great way to learn to paint. The thing about copying the old masters is that when you're copying the old masters, so let's say you go to a museum and you set your easel up and you're copying a Rembrandt, for example, or a Monet or anyone that you want. It could be a modern master for that matter, right? The problem is you're copying the painting, right? So you're copying their end product. You're not copying their translation of what they're seeing. So copying the painting, an old master painting, that's good. You learn technique, color harmony brush strokes, that stuff. And that is great. But what's even better is to copy the old master's painting by setting up a model or a still life or a landscape in the same exact fashion that they have their original set up. So you can look at their painting and you can imagine how they had set up a model or a still life or a landscape, what they had in the way of lighting. And then what you do is you set up a still life or figure in exactly that same lighting so that when you are going back and copying their painting, really what you want to do is copy their painting, use their painting as reference, but look at your subject matter and try to solve the same problems that they had to solve. That way you'll learn twice as much in that process of copying their paintings because you're going to get into your painting you're going to be like running a, let's say you run across a problem with an elbow or a vase and you'll look at their painting and they'll see oh that's how they solve that and then you'll get twice as much benefit out of your experience of copying their painting so what would be better than that well, the best thing you could do is to stand right next to Rembrandt, painting right beside him as he's solving these problems and looking at the model and translating it to his canvas. So you could stand there right beside him and do exactly the same thing that he does. Of course, the downside to that is he's dead and we have not invented time machines yet. So what's the next best thing for that? One of the best things is the thing I already said, where you set up a model or the still life in existence exactly the same fashion and try to translate the same way that he translated. But if you could have the same photograph and see a demonstration of him doing it. So like, let's say this is why I do my classes the way I do is I provide a photograph of what I'm working on and then I do a demonstration so people can see exactly what I'm working on as well as copy the picture that or the reference material that I used when I painted it. And that's a pretty good system because then you kind of get the best of both worlds. Now, the next thing I think is important, though, is if you were standing next to Rembrandt, if he didn't speak Dutch or whatever language it, it was that he spoke, then you would be in pro have a problem, too, because what you want to know, and here's the kicker, is you want to know the whys behind everything he does. So you might see him do something and you were like, oh, that's interesting, and you might copy it, but until you understand the reason why he did what he did, it's never gonna sink in, right? Because you won't have that, that base of knowledge that will help you to go through to the next painting after you're not standing next to Rembrandt and understand the why you do that. So that's why I think it's so important for artists when they teach is to give you the whys they do for everything, right? And that's what I try to do. I try to give you the whys. And that's kind of my pledge. And when I don't give you the whys or my students the whys, I ask that they email me and say, why did you do this on at this point in this video? And then I go look it up and then I either make a video and send it to them or I make a video and post it and then send them the link if I've already made that video. So anyway, it's so important to know the why. So many times when I was a student, art teachers would say, here, just do this. And they would never give you the whys and you just learn at a snail's pace when you don't have the whys as to what's going on with the understanding of how the painting is actually created and put together. A perfect illustration of this is the rules that all fly around painting. There's so many of them, I can't even list them. But a couple of real common ones are, is, one is don't ever put something in the center of your canvas, right? 
And for about 25% of, of paintings, that is a good idea, that you don't want to put something in the middle so it divides the painting, right? But 75% of the time, you do want something in the center of the canvas. And you always have to remember there's always something in the center of the canvas, right? So the rule is kind of a nonsense rule, but if you don't understand the why behind that rule, then you will always just be a slave to never putting something in the center of your canvas, right? Which is again come which is kind of nonsense because there's always going to be something in the center of your canvas whether it be a leaf or empty space but there's something always going to be there and another one is use two items not three and again that's one of those rules that makes sense for a small portion of the time but for the majority of the time, it's kind of a nonsense rule. So you'll end up being a slave to that rule if you don't understand the whys that drive that rule. So that's why it's so important. And that's why the best way to learn is to be standing right next to Rembrandt and watching everything he does as you paint the same painting and say, why did you do that? And then he explains it to you again, if you had a time machine and spoke Dutch. So anyway, that's my tip. Should I copy old master's paintings or even new master's paintings? Yeah, absolutely. Every chance you get. One of the beauties of it, you don't have to copy the entire thing. Just copy the part that you really want to learn. You know, you don't have to copy a gigantic painting when you only want to learn a four inch by four inch piece. Just copy that part. That's one thing most people don't realize. Is so they'll go and copy this whole thing and make it much more difficult than they need to. Anyway, that's it. You have a fantastic day and um, you take care.